Welcome. Um, I'm back again. So today um, I'm going to talk about some personal writing that I've written and the history behind it. Also how I come about to write in it. Um, and also I'm going to share some ideas that I personally try. They don't always work but that's my thing and they don't work, you know. I'll always go back. They're, they're always my favourite, so. Um, and each day I'm going to probably share an extra one or two things, some ideas, things I've found, because I like to research stuff, um, some information that i found, because I like to know what I'm living with, and I also like to know that... Um, what I'm in for as well, it's like when we get medication, always research it because you want to know what can happen, what may happen, you know, your side effects and all that. So, just in case it's like buying a car, you always get checked over, you always make sure everything's mechanically is fine. So, I guess our body is like that. We've got to make sure we're mechanically fit to handle and under, try to understand. We're never going to completely understand this wild world but as you can see I'm in my little own space again so this is like my little part of the earth so um, I'll be streaming from here I'm streaming from different places but at the moment this is where I'm comfortable from streaming so um, thank you to everyone yesterday for watching I had eight viewers so eight people look at it on laps you know I was shocked I was taken back like wow I said to my partner I went wow I've had eight you know I was worried that I wouldn't get any so but thank you to those people and appreciate it and yeah so um like I said yesterday I enjoy writing writing's just a release for me it's like I think it's by the time you get the words out of your head, there's space in your head. It doesn't always work that way. So it's once you get like one lot of words or one lot of paragraph out, it's like there's another lot waiting just to go in there, just to poke you and poke you and go, ha ha, we've, we've got you type of thing. So um, I like, like I said, please forgive me if I get emotional. I look like I'm you know, a bit ratty, I'm not used to this, I'm going to do, I'm trying to do this so I can help myself, because, you know, like I said, I want to be able to live a normal, normal life, I have it, I'm in my 40s, I can't remember the last time I lived a normal life, you know, I hear people say, we do this, we do that, we enjoy this, we enjoy that, I say I enjoy my writing, I enjoy music, I enjoy my dog as you've seen yesterday, Mr. Showboat, Mr. I need to know everything, so he won't come in today because I've got the door shut, but he's sniffing at the door and he's listening, he's waiting for me to come out, so he's just going to have to wait, isn't he? Anyhow, um, i like to get to my first reading. It's called A Thunderstorm Within. Now, just a little bit of history behind it. I was going through a personal crisis when I was... <sighs> it was going on for about two years. And the people I had to see about... the situation you know all these questions what's happened this and that how do you feel can you remember can you talk to us you know can you remember anything else and you know what was this and what was that you you start to get agitated because you're like i can only remember so much um unfortunately with trauma you may not remember it but it's still there but little things will trigger off like smells noises like i can't be around a lot of people maybe five people the most 
any more than that and I have to leave the room. I can't be in the room because I say educated, I feel like I can't breathe. So that's what I felt like when they were saying, I was trying to ask all these questions off. I understand they're trying to help, but as like I said, you can't, if I could just visually just get everything out here so people could understand, it wouldn't make sense. It'd be like a thousand piece jigsaw puzzle and not one piece would match. Not one piece would match at all because none of it makes sense. And you know, people look at you and go, how can you not make sense? You know, this is, can't you remember? You know, type of thing. And it's because you're so broken down, you're so worn down, you just go, I can't do this anymore. So you end up getting agitated, you get angry, you get emotional. I'm a very emotional person and I hate it. I wish I didn't know how to cry. I really do because I cry at the tiniest things. You know, like when I watch YouTube and I see stories of other people struggling, I see, I see myself in them. Similar stories, not everyone has the same story. Not everyone has the same experience. We have similar. That's the thing in common. We have similar. And people we do different things as coping mechanisms. Mine's writing. Now, I had someone approach me about my writing already. I'm not keen to hand that over just to anyone. Because it's my personal stuff. If anyone's going to put it out, it's going to be me. And whatever happens to it, so be it. I would just love to reach one person. And have that one person reach another person. I'm not in this to be, you know, oh, look at her, she just wants to be known, this, this and that. I don't want to be that. I want to be that person that was always shy, scared, never had confidence. To be a, this person actually did something she's not used of and scared of and spoke my words are true like I said I'm not going to be pretend I know everything I'm not going to make everything sound professional if it's jumbled up that's how it is with me and I'm pretty sure people out there who are just struggling in life like whether lonely you know they they don't know what's going on in their life they're confused they have a mental illness of any sort now, it could be anything it could be that you've lost someone you don't know how to cope you know at the end of the day, we're all human. We all have feelings. We all make mistakes. We all learn from making mistakes. The thing is not to keep going back to that one thing that keeps the same mistake happening. I'm a victim of that. I would be someone that would put everyone before me, even the family dog, the family cat, neighbour. I would be last. I will try and see the best in people when there wasn't but they didn't want me to see the best in them but I gave everything I have um, I've lost a lot of personal relationships family relationships I've pushed people away because I don't know how to cope and they've pushed me away because they don't like this person and unfortunately, those people, some of them, are very personal to me. Um, and they hold a very special spot to me. And that spot is empty in my heart. So, um, as I speak, I'm, I apologise. I really do. Um, um, Those people that I've lost, that I regret that I've lost, I can't get back. I can't make them see or understand. And that's the thing, you can't make anyone see or understand. You can only explain what you can explain and leave it up to them. Um, someone said to me yesterday, actually, said, today is today, tomorrow was yesterday, tomorrow 
yesterday is history so um so the, what they're virtually saying is don't worry about what happened yesterday move on forward to today look forward to tomorrow you know um just small steps you know we've got to appreciate life because we only get one life and then sometimes we think oh, okay we'll just wait we'll give that friend a call next week or we'll go see someone the next time you know in the area there's going to be time where that person is not going to be at the end of the phone that person's not going to be at that house that person you're not going to be able to sit next to and just have a chat to you know so as humans we take people for granted and we do everyone does I did until I knew what mental health was um, you sometimes don't want to know how to cope you just think oh, let's put it away in the cupboard you know let's put it away put it ignore it ignore it but then it, you end up with as a child 12 year old I was always constantly going to the doctor I had stomach pains I didn't believe him when he goes it's stress it's stress now I do know it's stress and I read up what it can do to you it can mess you up completely to the point where you get to that breaking point you get to that breaking point where you go no, no more cut, cut everyone off cut everyone off don't have nothing to do with anyone like I tell you now I hardly hate picking up the phone talking to people what am I going to say hi how are you yeah I'm good I'm fantastic really when I don't know how I am I'm just plodding along I guess um, it's really hard to look this is where I'm struggling it's really hard to explain some things but I'll get back to the poem that I was going to talk about sorry I went off track so please forgive me I just sometimes these thoughts just come into my head it's like no nah, I've got to talk about this so if I don't talk about it I'll forget about it later so please yeah now the thunderstorm within me like I said I was going through a hard time and people are like what's wrong no it's like I felt like everyone's just like bang 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 at me like I need to answer now 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 when I was trying to process in my head what was happening before I could tell anybody else um, I would come home from my day's work and I used to have tiles all and floorboards through my house that I had I would come home and lay on the cold tiles face down flat I would then suddenly wake up I used to have a friend that come over she would come in to sit with me wouldn't talk just sit until I was ready to talk or I was ready to cry or say hey let's go you know she wouldn't bombard me now she's special to me I don't have much to do with her anymore but she got me through a hell of a lot and even though we don't communicate much anymore she I owe a lot to her so thank you Leslie I do appreciate it and um, I'm sorry I didn't show enough appreciation for it. Um, so like I said, it's called from the, it's called the thunderstorm within. And um, like I said, these are my own words. These as they come out of my head. I don't rewrite them. I don't ad lib. I don't add extra bits in here. So this is as they come out. So. I hope you enjoy. Um, so, just excuse me for one second. Thunderstorm within. I'm scratching my own insides, wanting to be let out. I'm screaming, but there is no voice that can be heard 
My head feels heavy and dark inside. I am lost and unable to control my thoughts and feelings. I don't want to cry. It makes me feel weak and the light I have left inside begins to fade more and lose whom I am or meant to be. I want to smile and show my inner light but feel too heavy in the soul too. My emotions are sensitive and anxiety is high. I wish this was all a mask that I could just take off and throw it away. My head plays a movie I can't turn off. It has no ending. Trying to explain what is going inside my head and why I feel this way is hard to put in words. Everything is broken up like a jigsaw puzzle and trying to put the pieces together is difficult. But then for me, because I feel my body is stopping me, I try to fight it. The harder I try, the worse I struggle. I don't want to go to the dark place anymore. I don't want to feel the cold and the heaviness of what's inside my head. My face tries to smile even though I can't inside. Just for a second it was going to happen. But then my head and my dark soul went out in the end. If you ask me why I'm crying it's hard to describe. If you ask me why I can't fight to show my smile. My answer won't make sense inside or out. Mm. that was a thunderstorm within me that is how I felt when I was bombarded I was like the questions, questions I had to answer I had to have an answer then I can't give an answer then and that made it hard to communicate with what was going on but like I said those are the words just come out of my head naturally then I just sit there and it's just right and right and right. One night I wrote six poems in one night. About two to three pages each. Did that make sense? I don't know. Does everything make sense in this world? Does everything have to make sense? Does everything have to have an explanation? Well, some two people it does. Now. Dark and Lost, this is the second poem, um, this was, this was, this is when my head actually started to feel so heavy and foggy and I didn't know what it was back then but I was suffering fog brain. So your brain is cloudy, you can't see, you forget, and you feel hopeless. Um, example forgetting, I stood in the supermarket for 10 minutes one time. I had a list in my bag, but my brain did not tell me the list was in my bag. I'm standing in an aisle looking, what did I want, what did I need, for 10 minutes. And I felt like an idiot because people were looking at me, you know. And I started to panic and I'm like, oh, what have I done? What have I done? Eventually, I took whatever I had, paid for it. I left. When I got home, my brain told me, shopping was in your purse. It's meant to help you, this brain. If it doesn't help you, what's the use of it? It makes you worse. It's, to me, it's your enemy. And it's not a very good one to have. Um, so I was starting to lose my self-worth. Um, I thought I was a waste. You know, why am I here? I started questioning everything. Like, every single thing. Like, does this person judge me? Does this person accept me? Is it pity that I'm getting? You know, is this a, a real friendship? Um... <laughs> And 
as I believed everything what was said to me negative I took it it was like a sponge they say words hurt worse than actions because those words I can still remember from years ago years ago years ago and sometimes when I hear someone say those words it triggers me off it's like no nah, no nah, I can't do this so that's that's life I guess um and I wrote this at 2 a.m. in the morning. It took me 10 minutes to write. Like I said, I haven't changed it. It's word for word that's come out of my mouth. I don't alter it. And I write to keep things real. I'm not going to write to be fancy. You know, people don't like it too, but I love it. This is me. This is me. Nothing in Wonderland. Oh, look at me. I've got my own little space world going on here. Soon, I'm going to have backdrops of and you're going to go oh yeah she's nutty you know and I'm cuckoo but you know what aren't we all in a weird little way that's the ones that don't admit it that think they're perfect is the ones that yeah anyway so this one's called dark and lost feel like I have failed the people who are important to me the negativity of my life is drowning me and crushing my world. I want to scream help. I want to be positive. I want to take this world head on. Head high and ready to enjoy it. And my loved ones. I want to make them proud of me. And walk beside me hand in hand and heart to heart. A heavy dark cloud is over my head. Ready to start a thunderstorm. Within my body, I wish for the sun to shine. The birds to sing. To happy delight. I think at the things that I have been said. That to me, in a negative way. Words hurt me more than actions. The hurtful words never go away. So I try to bury them deep inside and lose them for good my head won't allow me and my heart tries to comfort me but too heavy to win out why do you do this why do I cry is it what I ask myself many many so many times I have more questions than answers and flooded inside with my thoughts thunderstorm that is going on inside of my soul the simplest thing of a hug and a kiss on the forehead the touch of the sunshine on my face for my loved ones is something I embrace please help me get rid of this storm and embrace the sunshine that we all deserve. I won. I was actually scared when I wrote that. That's the first time I've actually admitted to I've had a dark place. And um, I don't want to go down that dark place again. I've been down it many times. And each time you go down it, it's harder and harder and harder to come out. It's not like you can just pull yourself out or, hey, you know, I don't know if you've had anyone say, oh, you'll get over it. You'll be right. You know, don't worry about it. It's not that easy. When someone's told you something so many times, it's like it's tattooed inside your head. And every time you think you've got it taken out, it just goes back in. Why can't we all just be positive to people, you know? There's, there's too many cruel people in this world. And unfortunately, we either become them or we're hurt by them. So, yeah. Anyway, um, reading number three. This is called The Rabbit Hole. Um... I was 
and I still do to this day, I want to give up. I do. I want to give up. I think, I, I can't do this no more. I want to give up. You know, I just want to hide. I don't want to kill myself. I want to hide. I want to get that right. Okay? That I just want to hide. Um, and on this day, I was so messed up and so lost in this dark fog that's in my head every day. I was at my breaking point. I didn't realise I had a breaking point and I found out this was my breaking point. I'd had enough and I wanted to run away but I couldn't because so I created a rabbit hole to escape. Um, I can say I've been there many times. I took a lot, it took a lot to come back out and at times I felt like I wanted to board it up, nail it up, bang, you know, even concrete it up so no one can get in. But then I realised, why should I let the people that made me this way, through their selfish, arrogant attitudes and high almighty personalities, you know, I drag myself out of the hole and promise one day I want to fill that mother up and I want to just permanently seal it up and so I can never ever go down that hole again because each time I go down the hole it gets darker it gets colder it gets harder to come out and I don't want to be down there it's a place where you're left with your thoughts in a dark, cold place. And you just say, nah, I'm not coming out, I'm not coming out. But then you realise there may be one person out there that wants and needs you. Or maybe you need them and want them. You haven't met them yet. So you owe yourself that opportunity and that chance to find out so, so um and the rabbit hole actually when I posted this my things on Facebook is probably one of the ones with the most views so what can I say um I'm quite proud of that one but for having as many views because I didn't think I would get many views but um, it's probably one of the top three that I think really describe what life's about okay so the rabbit hole I escape to my rabbit hole where no one can get in it helps me hide and mask my feelings and emotions within I hate having feelings and emotions. They make my thunderstorm dark and heavy. It fills up my rabbit hole and floods with darkness and confusion. I want to escape my rabbit hole and cover it in so I can't go back out ever again. Never, ever, ever again. Every time I try to close that rabbit hole, it gets bigger. The deeper and feel it and deeper and feel like I'm suffocating and pushed down and being held down and can't get back up. My rabbit hole has no welcome sign, no light to say here I am so come inside. The walls in my rabbit hole have negative words that have been said to me about me and thoughts about me. I try to rub them off but they come back again. The words that have been said or words that have been spoken have been tattooed like a scar inside no matter how deep they go I'm scared this rabbit hole is taking over my life and soul starting to feel I have no control left I have lost my strength and confidence and can control my life anymore it feels like my tears are drowning me inside Every time I cry when people get close to my rabbit hole, 
I put my wall up so I can't get hurt. Disappointment, embarrassment, anyone, as I don't want them to see or come in to my world under the ground. The outside noises scare me and make me want to run and hide. In my rabbit hole I am alone and cold. I try to embrace the outside world but then revert back again because it's the day. It's the only thing I know I have some control. But it controls me more. It's hard to fight the deeper it goes. The voices from the past that have been that created negativity in my life echoes in my rabbit burrow and the sound travels for far and never stops. They haunt my thoughts, they haunt my space that I have left. I don't think I am worthy of any positive influence in my life and begin to believe that the more and the more as our time goes on. I know I do deserve positive and good things in my life just as much as anyone else. I hope that one day I can cover my rabbit hole and cover it in, leave all the negative words and others and all my negative baggage from the thunderstorm within me all buried and never be felt, seen or heard again. So, I, so really what's that saying is my rabbit hole is like what I'm feeling now and I just want to be able to one day live a life where I don't have to worry about breaking down. I don't have to worry about little trigger points hurting me my goal is to get there and that's the reason why I'm doing this because if this is my type of release and this is my way my own therapy maybe I can help just one person and if I can get out of me and get I want, I want my sunshine to shine I want people to see the happy me. I want people to see I can be nutty and funny. I don't want to be nutty and crazy. You know, cuckoo crazy, no. I want to be nutty and funny, you know, and t laugh, giggle, and <laughs> like you, I watch a movie. They're funny bits. I don't find them funny. Excuse me. Um, I don't find them funny. I don't know why. I can be there watching a TV show and you can ask me what's going on and I'll be like, I don't know. Because it's not who I am at the moment. So, but I will get there very slowly and who knows. Now, my last poem to read is called Silence, Thoughts and Words. This one's very personal to me, so if I start to cry while I'm reading it, just to let you know that it's just a little personal, a little close to my heart. I wrote this one day when I was told by someone that was meant to be my best friend and I could trust them with my life. I was actually told by two people, same day, at the same place, that I was <laughs> invisible virtually to them. My feelings, my emotions, it was all invisible and I meant nothing virtually to them and anything I felt I wasn't going to get. I wasn't going to get anything good out of life. Um, one is someone who is personally, like I said, close to me, who no longer wishes to be in my life and 
doesn't want me in their life so I've got to respect them for that but it hurts me every day because all I have is memories I can't live life on memories I want to be able to pick the phone up I want to be able to touch them I want to be able to talk to them Do that. so anyway um, and there's other person it was a friend of mine I thought they had my back but they just um, sorry I just lost what I was up to I was yeah one is personally close to me and no longer wishes to have me in their life the other was just a friend that I thought would have my back no, I didn't think any of these words I heard would come out of their mouth. It shocked me. They virtually had said, when I told them what I was going through, oh, it doesn't matter. You'll be right. Get over it. You know? Don't worry about it. Um, you won't win. You get nothing. You are nothing. Virtually, I was the scum on the bottom of their shoe. That's how I felt. That's how bad it hurt me. So, I can say goodbye or nothing. I got in my car, drove away, parked around the corner, and all of a sudden, these words come into my head. I'm like, I don't have any pen and paper. The one time I don't have any pen and paper, I normally have a book with me. I didn't bring it. So, I had to get the phone record it I took a lot of rip you know trying to work with that because I was very you know emotional um I got home I wrote wrote every word for word and I still remember every voice and every nasty comment and every remark that they said they never know or have never been told how negative their words were and hurt me. The two people I thought in the world would be showed me their at least compassion, you know, a little bit of you'll be right, come on. Come sit down, come have a cup of tea or you know nothing like that. Not not even to say, hey, you wanna talk? Feel free. It was virtually a Nah, you're like a disease now. Nah, get away from us. From us. Um, they made me feel this way. I never ever told them that. And look, we all live in and go in our own little world. We all do. We all, we all want to escape. We all daydream, you know, think, oh, I'm here, I'm there, you know. My little world very cramped it's like a mix of Alice in Wonderland Peter Pan in Neverland and Mary Poppins oh they all just cramped in there bang 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 it's wacky it's wild it's up it's down but to me that's my safe place that's where I go that's where I go to even if it's five minutes, ten minutes, a minute to escape. So, and you know what? Yeah, we all deserve that one little place. Whether it be a bedroom with a lot light, a garden or somewhere. That one little place where you can just go, oh, I can breathe. Um... So, I'd like to read the last poem to you. And it's called Silence, Thoughts and Words. Have you ever felt nothing or what or who you are doesn't matter or count? I have and do. I feel that I am suffocating and want to count the matter in this world. 
and I have no I am suffering and I want to count and I want to matter in this world I want to be recognized I would like to contribute and use my voice to be heard I may not be the smartest or be quickest to react and show my confidence but I am slow and wish to be more positive and not held back from my own insecurity or others that have made me feel this way. I try to speak up and say how I feel so I can ask for help or be heard. I don't know how or why. I want to be judged. I don't want to be judged or put down by words or thoughts by other people. People are all equal to me. Instead of putting people down and making them feel ins insignificant, we should be trying to understand each other. The only way I can cope is to ask. Uh, is to lock my thoughts and feelings away because they don't matter or count. My voice is silenced because it's not allowed to be heard. I listen to others and give my full attention. I feel I don't know how to communicate properly or say anything and it's not going to make me come across as dumbly useless. Are they judging me? Do I fit in? What I ask and wonder and try to be myself? I can't be myself if I don't know who I am or what can I offer to anyone else if I can't offer myself any happiness. So Four poems that I personally wrote. Um, now, I'm sorry. Sorry. Um, I thought about it as I was writing what I'm going to talk about today. And I thought about maybe I can share just a couple of things that I do to try to relax for myself. I try. They don't always work. They won't always work, but I can try. Um, one thing is I love is acoustic music. I get my phone, I just Google acoustic music on music sites. I put my headphones in, I, just, I listen to the strings, I listen to the words, I listen to the rhythm. You really need to listen to the words when it comes to song because that's the main part of the song. They're trying to tell a story. They're trying, you know, just trying to get something out there. It's like storytelling, but with what singing and music. So, and it's just I used to play guitar, but I gave up because I become a mum. My life stopped. So I can look after my children and be a mum. Or the best mum possible I was going to be anyway. And so anything I loved, anything passion I had, stopped then. That was many years ago. So yeah, I won't tell you how many. So but yeah. Um, I even went out and I brought a violin. Of all things to buy. Tried it a couple of times. One of my goals is to actually learn to play it. Violin's such a beautiful instrument. It's just very close. Um, I love drawing. It doesn't have to be a perfect drawing. I look at drawing like words. I'm drawing what's trying to get out of my head. So it's like you're releasing those that stuff that's making you feel this way um some of my drawings are good some of my drawings aren't um my drawings make sense to me some don't 
So at the end of the day, it's always goes like, I design my own tattoo. Because I didn't want to walk around with the same tattoo and have, hey, someone's got that one tattoo. Someone's got that one tattoo. No one's got my tattoo. Because that's mine. I designed it. It's personal to me. And it's got a saying on it. And it's on my left hand side. Where my heart is. To remind me. Every day or any time. Hey. Lift your head up. I'll tell you exactly. Oh, I've forgotten what it is. It's. Be true to yourself. And hold your head high. Now I've designed it myself. Because I don't. Like I said. I don't want something. Everyone's got this, everyone's got that. Personal for me. It's got personal meaning, so yeah. Now, beach. I used to drive to the beach 12, 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. Blanket, I lay there. Just lay there, I used to listen to the sound of the sand. The sound of the water, the waves. I used to listen to the breeze. It's like I used to just breathe every time the water come in and then the water come out. I at one point woke up on the sand and I was like, oh, it's daylight. Wow, okay. So, um, and the best thing is, when no one's around, you are the only one there. It's beautiful. And... Like some people, certain things are their little niche. The beach. If I could live on the beach, I would love to because I'd be there every day. You wouldn't find me in the house. I'm there. I don't care how cold it is. Um, I started what looked on YouTube. I've started watching videos, and there's a artist called Alex Gray he has his it's out there art but it's so mesmerizing it's just you get lost you can just, just, just you just you be having to do something and all of a sudden you're like I've been watching this for an hour people have put word um, music to it and it's beautiful look him up Alex Gray you look at the art and it's to me it resembles a confused state of human. Some of them you look have got three heads or they're just it's just beautiful. It's very emotional. I get very emotional about it. Um also there's one called Asterix Official. He creates music and he creates his art but it's different to Alex's and it's oh, I watched it for two hours once I forgot the time that's how I got so into it it's just something that once you start watching you get hooked um, I also like to go and look at other people who are you know just stuff like this on and I listen to them on how they they're coping and all that and it's good to know that there's somebody else out there that's cuckoo hey yeah so um I'm going to eventually once I work at this stupid technology um eventually have people they can I don't know tune in they can talk themselves and share their stuff but if you have any ideas on or suggestions how people can you know just relax and coping mechanisms I guess I'd be very happy to read them out and stuff like that and I guess I want to finish up by saying thank you for listening maybe boring but hey I've got a bit of go so but I'll see what happens um thank you for listening and I hope I just 
you know, you just just inspire one person. Just if you're struggling, please, 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 just say help. There's no shame in asking for help. We're not all invincible. Sorry, friend. And I would like to clarify too. When I say I feel like giving up, there's one thing I want to say. Yeah, I would never, I've never ever felt like taking my life. You know why? Because I would not give those people, the negative people, the satisfaction of knowing that I took my life because of the stuff they had put onto me. I mean, they're probably putting it on to me because they're having a shit day. They're having a shit life. So, hey, we'll put on this person. We'll put on that person, you know. It might, might make them feel better. Can they sleep at night? I hope not. But I would never give anyone the satisfaction of me taking my life because there's only one person that can take my life, and that's God. Whether you're religious or not, God's the only one that will take your life. You only get one life. Appreciate it, please. Appreciate the people that come into your life. Even if it's you, just go out and give someone a hug. You go, just, just give them a kiss on the forehead, you know. You, you tell them that you're there to talk to or you sit and listen. Sometimes we just want someone who would sit and listen. Sometimes we just want that hug from someone to tell us we're all right. Um, it's just, just nice to know there's someone out there that's going to say, you know what, I'm here. Or would you want to talk? Or would you just want to sit, watch, do nothing? Um, the other reason I couldn't take my life is because of my two children. Regardless of what's happened, I don't want them to be have been burying their mother because it took, she took her life because of this. Why? You know, it's not fair on them. It's not fair. So, and too many people have lost their lives because they get to a point in life where it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be mental illness. It doesn't have to be any specific. They just feel like they can't cope anymore. And that's that's how they feel. Their loved ones are burying that person because that either, either that person couldn't speak up or people didn't take the time to say, hey, you okay? So just remember, someone might be laughing and be jolly and be ha ha ha, say I'm enjoying life. They wear they're wearing a mask. I've, I've, I've worn many masks and I still do. But the problem is the masks get heavier and heavier and heavier and get harder to put on because you get to a point where you can't do it no more. So, uh, please, just look out for someone please and just make sure that you make sure they're all right and you know what you know what if you have to like a goofball to have a bit of fun so what if you look a bit weird and you don't fit into that person's world or you don't fit into that that idealistic of oh no you don't fit no you're no she's strange no i can't can't even remember that so what you don't need them the people that matter to you most will be in your life. It's not about the numbers. It's the people that are important. I would rather have two real people in my life than ten fake people. You know why? Because those two real people are going to be there. Those ten fake people, they're not going to be there. So it's not about numbers. It's about people being real I'm not in it for selfish reasons. So, on that note, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Uh, 
I really do hope you all have a good day. Smile at least once. You will let someone see that smile. You know, you've got it. And be true to yourself. Hold your head high and bye for now. Talk tomorrow. Have a good day.